Welcome to the PH4410 review uh, for random matrix theory. In this review, we are going to do a little octave exercise for the random matrix theory that we have uh, reviewed earlier on. So let me start by launching octave, which is a free clone of MATLAB. The syntax is very similar to MATLAB, so you could do this exercise using MATLAB yourself. First, let us create a random time series cross-section by using the uh, normal random uh, variable, uh, ran normal random uh, function that is built into MATLAB as well as to Octave. Now, the, the thing about random matrix theory is that uh, the number of variables must be large and the the, of course, the, the number of samples must be at least as large as the number of variables. So here, let us choose. So here, let us choose um, the number of variables to be four hundred, uh, and for each of the variables, we will have eight hundred uh, sample points. So in this case, the Q, which is uh, T over N, is two. So first, let us create this random. Um, this random time series cross section we have created it already, and the correlation matrix can be computed very easily using the call function, uh, and that will give us the correlation matrix. We can check that it is indeed four hundred by four hundred, where four hundred is the total number of variables. Uh, in fact, we can see what the matrix elements are uh, by doing doing an image of it. You can see, we don't worry about the, the warnings. You see that uh, most of the matrix elements are close to being zero. Of course, the diagonal is one. Uh, and, but we are not, that in, in this particular review exercise, we are not interested in uh, the actual magnitude of the correlation matrix, but uh, the eigenvalues. So we can easily get the eigenvalues of C by using the EIG function that computes the eigenvalues. So here we have them, L, 400 of them. And you can see that they are sorted in ascending order so that the largest uh, eigenvalue is at the back, uh, which is 2.86. And the smallest one is at the front, which is 0 0.088. Okay, now let us create first a uh, histogram for this correlation matrix. So using the his function but capturing the output, let's choose to use 100 bins. Okay, we have 100 bin now. Let's check the bin width and that can be done using the diff function. Uh, this will do, this will subtract successive values of L bin. So let me just check, show you what L bin is. So L bin starts from 0 0.10 uh, and goes all the way to 2.848 okay so the dl bin which is the bin width will be equals to diff l bin uh, and because they are all the same if you just see that they're all the same so i can just take the first one and just take the first one which is 0 0.027740 uh, and the and I need to now normalize the, in order to check against, to compare against theory, I need to normalize the uh, distribution of the eigenvalues. And to do that, I will take n bin divided by 400, because this is the uh, total number of eigenvalues, and then divided by dl bin, so that we it, the, the values of n bin will, will be comparable to the, the eigenvalue distribution. So let's do that. And then now let's calculate the maximum theoretical eigenvalue, which is 1 plus 1 over Q, but Q is 2, plus 2 over square root Q, but Q is 2 again. So L max is 2.9142. L mean, whatever L mean, it is 1 plus 1 over Q minus 2 over square root Q. So this is 0 0.085786. Okay, so now let us create... Uh, a set of grids between the grid points between L min and L max. So L min, L max. Let's make create five hundred of them. 
and then plot the eigenvalue distribution. This is Q divided by 2 pi okay, times square root of L max minus LL dot star LL minus L min. Okay, then dot divided by LL. Okay, so now we are ready. So to plot, let's do bar L bin and bin. You see that it looks like this. This is how the this is how the the, the histogram of uh, eigenvalues look like, and we should now plot uh, against uh, plot the theoretical distribution. But let's first uh, hold hold the graph, hold the graph, add some labels to the axis. X label is lambda. Let's see whether it, it complains, but let's see whether it, it's able to render. Uh, it's not able, able to render, so uh, so I guess we have to just use lambda. Okay, and then Y label is P lambda. Okay, and now we are ready to plot the theoretical distribution, LL, PLL. Let's make it red. And let's make the line width thicker so that we can see it against the, the bar charts, the bar plot. Uh, and here we have it. Here we have it. You can see uh, quite clearly that the, the, the empirical distribution of eigenvalues uh, of the correlation matrix that was created from a normally distributed random time series cross-section uh, reproduces very closely the theoretical distribution uh, according to Pastor Machenko. And I encourage you to uh, try this exercise on your own.